One dark summer night, I was so bored. So extremely bored. I looked at my Steam library and found more than a thousand games, but not a single one I felt like playing. On nights like these, there is a place I like to visit. A dark and vile place. The Half-Life 2 Mod DB page. This mysterious place is home of many dead hopes and dreams, but also a breeding nest for fantastic projects. Some of them even became full Steam games. While I was browsing the huge list of mods, something weird caught my eye. In between all these beautiful thumbnails, there was this weird brown one. It was horribly designed and had text on it I could barely even read. The short description spoke of a kingdom in chaos called Arknor. Great, I thought. A medieval RPG Half-Life 2 mod. Just what I wanted. But what I found inside was something I never expected. I was greeted by another horribly designed image that read, Start your journey in the capital outskirts. Help the locals. Gain entry in Ardnor. Mercenaries have infiltrated parts of the island. Locals have been disappearing. This instantly reminded me of the 2006 game Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. A game also in a swords engine where you could kick enemies and do magic and had a game with like cool physics and you could do like cool killer moves and stuff could destroy and it was very cool. Basically, it was a really good action RPG with all of the good stuff from Half-Life 2. I scrolled down and I couldn't believe what I was reading. It had a group system, a dungeon system, a social system, a quest system. All of these systems, more systems than I could ever want. This was the point I got hype. Was this a co-op RPG? Was this an MMO? I just had to know. I quickly scrolled down further and what I saw was amazing. GIFs showing off MMO-like menus and dungeons. I was stunned. A full MMO in the vein of Dark Messiah? I couldn't believe that I had never heard of this. I rushed to YouTube to find some gameplay, but to my surprise I couldn't find anything. Did I find a gem nobody ever heard of? I headed to the website, infestus-game.com. Instantly I was greeted by an equally horrible designed website, showing off more gameplay screenshots and a big download now button. On the download page I was told that the game was in closed beta, and I could request a closed beta key right now. I was amazed that I was gonna get a key, I thought this was just some mod you drag in your source mods folder. After booting up the game I got a familiar looking title screen. I opened up the realm list and found one world being hosted, with nobody playing. I was afraid I downloaded some old dead mod that has still some weird Russian boomer somewhere playing it. Nonetheless, I connected to the server and was met with the familiar source messages. Ah! This looks great. I loaded into like the most robust character creation screen I'd ever seen. So many options, I couldn't believe this mod was made by a few people. I- oh. Wait, this is Black Desert footage, hold on. Yes, this is the correct one. This is the character creation screen. One peasant looking model with no options. I guess it's still in closed beta. So I took my standard peasant and headed into the world of Argnor. The beauty that lied behind that loading screen was amazing. I just started laughing instantly. It looks even worse than I could ever imagined. Horrible models, awkward idle animations, some aged textures and all mixed with this fine drab color palette. I ran a bit further and absolutely lost it when I saw the first wolf. I mean, they look like they were designed by a 5 year old who had like 30 minutes in Blender. I mean, even the wolves in 2004's World of Warcraft look way better than this 2019 game. I mean, it is still in closed beta, but... Eh? I engaged in combat and it was horrendous. It was like an autistic Gmod melee battle against the horrible Half-Life 2 AI. The combat wasn't really more than exploiting strafe so your enemy can't hit you. This is really effective against those wolves because it seems like they're just using tank controls or something, they just can't hit you when you're next to them. After some nice wolf slaughter I headed into the village. You, you hear that? That little pause? In a 10 second loop? Wow. Most people would have given up by now. But something magical happened. I played in Festus for 8 hours straight.
Before I knew it, I was completely geared out. Wolves were my bitch. I was doing 5 man raids completely solo and I finished pretty much all content. This was the most fun I had in an MMO in a while. There was something very cozy about Infestus. The outdated graphics and the drab colors made it feel like I was playing some old beloved MMO that recently got revived. The community also helps give that feeling. While recording this footage, only one guy was playing the game. And the most people I have seen online was like 5. This way, everybody starts to know each other and friendship starts being made. Even the Discord server only has about 100 people in it. Weirdly, the combat feels straight out of RuneScape as well, but in a different way if you know what I mean. In RuneScape you have something called safe spotting. This means trapping an enemy behind a fence or a rock so you're safe from its melee attacks, while you can just perfectly range him or do magic attacks against him without worrying about dying. In Infestus, you have a strategy like this as well, or you can stand on an object and use your bow like you stand on a rock or something, or you hold S and mouse one. Does this mean the combat is good? Not really. This strategy is pretty much the meta for any kind of PvM, making magic and melee feel a bit useless. They can pack a bigger punch, but when you're being followed by a horde of standard unity acid looking skeletons, there's no way you will survive in there if you run in there with a melee weapon. Magic also seems to be a bit useless. Even with a build with all skill points and intelligence and good magic gear, the damage seems way too random. Sometimes I will hit a 150, other times I will hit an 85. While using range will give you a nice constant 49 damage and you can shoot about 3 arrows in the time it takes to charge a spell. There is an endgame spell you can get that does an AoE damage for a couple seconds. This spell can be really useful when killing a large amount of mobs, like when you're in a solo raid. Now I did hear they were going to change the bows in the next update, so this information may be a bit outdated when you're seeing this. After you get the combat down, it's time for the catacombs. This is a Festus' only raid and is unlocked at level 8. This raid is your standard MMO raid affair. A couple of rooms filled with enemies and three bosses along the way. There's a timer on screen that starts when you enter the first room. You get 13 minutes to defeat all the bosses. If you do it within the time limit, you get a rewards chest with currently the best items in the game. I have only gotten the shadow spell scroll. Twice. The raid really isn't that hard and could easily be done with a bow and running circles around the first room. That's how I soloed the raid at level 9. Infestus also completely lacks any kind of PvP. I would really love to see a PvP zone like the Wilderness of RuneScape. It's all where players could attack each other and you drop the gear you're wearing if you die. It could be super tense when you're crossing a PvP zone and suddenly you see an arrow that just misses you. You start running, something that the game also misses and is a bit frustrating, and suddenly you get hit with a slow spell. It could be so fun, but the combat needs some patching before something like this can be implemented. Okay, enough combat. Let's talk about quests. They are not good. Most involve you doing X or killing Y. I feel like they mostly serve to make the grind easier, but sometimes you have this problem where the next quests unlock on your next level up, but you ran out of quests to do. So prepare for some wolf grinding. Quests also give you points towards certain factions. This doesn't do anything yet. I know. Exciting. The menus also can use some polish. They are fine besides the problem that they look blurry on higher resolutions. It does have a nice stat screen that shows all the info you need for a combat build. There is also a user list which shows your friends, ignored and current online players. The icons look very familiar though. Hmm. The quest log is also your standard affair, showing the description and the objectives of your current quest. And that's pretty much all that Infestus has to offer at the moment. It's not much, but it feels like a bite-sized MMO that has some fun but extremely flawed action combat. I think with some patches, some artists and some time, Infestus might become something beautiful. I'm certainly grinding my character to level 20, which is a level cap at the moment. I hope to see Infestor flower into something beautiful in the coming months, and I will definitely jump back on from time to time. Thank you all for watching.